of all the strategies and operations of Satan, of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception. Can you imagine that? That of the many strategies that we see that Satan deploys, the most pronounced based on scripture is deception. Please say deception. One more time, say deception. deception. Write this down. What does it mean to deceive? We are now building an understanding on the operation of Satan, demons, and the dark kingdom. What does it mean to deceive? Are you ready? To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. Comma, usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. I'll take it again. To deceive means to deliberately, underline the word deliberately, please. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. To deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. Comma, usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. We are defining deception now. That to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie. It's not true. For your personal gain, the gain of the deceiver, or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived. Of all the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them lest Satan should take advantage of us because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver and that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true. Powerful. Write this down. Are you learning? Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood I want to define it for you now deception which is the same thing as falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea I'll take it again deception which is the same thing as falsehood. Deception is a statement or action. Is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, comma, hide the truth, comma, or promote a false belief or idea. That's the definition of deception. A statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, or promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. You may want to add this. It is often done for personal gain. Deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, promote a false belief or idea full stop it is often done for personal gain isn't this powerful that the chiefest strategy of satan as far as carrying out his agenda is in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture that the greatest and the most pronounced is 
deception write this down please about deception very important point deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth wow deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth it's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth that means for you to be a deceiver the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth deception cannot happen until the deceiver in this case satan is aware of the truth so is it true that satan knows that jesus is lord is it true that jesus that satan knows that there is victory given to the saints is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved is it true that satan knows that jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life is it true that satan knows that jesus gave us the authority over him no wonder he does his ministry of deception so well because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth Is someone learning now it is impossible for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance because a deceiver the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally are we learning now let's take a structured biblical study i wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception but we'll jump it for the sake of time I want us to take one case study. We are studying now how Satan operates. Are you ready? We want to take one Bible story and then we'll examine it closely. And I taught you here that theologically speaking, there is what we call the law of first mention. That every time you want to study a subject, a thought, or an idea, your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage that becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used is that true so we'll go to genesis but before then let's look at two or three scriptures john 8 44 john 8 44 let's start from where we left off jesus is speaking now and Jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer when? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Do you know what this means? Jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth. He says he refused to abide to live in the truth he willfully came out of that realm of truth he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it keep that scripture second corinthians 11 3 second corinthians 11 3 but I fear, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. So, Apostle Paul here is using a story to show us the deception of Satan. Are you seeing where Paul is leading us to now? Paul is saying, if you want to study the deception of Satan, study what happened with Satan and Eve. In the garden of eden because he's saying satan will still use that strategy against you are you seeing now he's saying just as satan beguiled eve through subtlety he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he walked with eve do you know what he's saying he's saying when it has to do with that strategy it is his master strategy he will not change it you study satan's operation by studying what happened 
between him and Eve. First Timothy 2 and verse 13, where you read and laughed. Now I hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Do we believe this? Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, now when you read this you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes the bible is written in summary and so it does not give us the the depth of the discussion because this is not just something that happened within minutes i told you that in studying scripture you have to use the mind of literature you have to use the mind of a historian. You have to use the mind of an archaeologist. And then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man. These are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture. If all you have is the mind of a spiritual man, as powerful as that is, you will not really understand the Bible. Because the Bible has a literature component the bible has a historical component the bible has an archaeological component and then it has largely a spiritual component are we learning now watch carefully please we are studying satan now and he said unto the woman yea had god said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden now please listen carefully Go back to verse 1. Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden, it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve as spirits had dominion, but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden, Adam and man was head over her. Are we together now? And Satan would not come directly and attack the head. But he knew that there was a connection between Adam and Eve. There was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive Adam. But he knew that based on that structure, there is a connection between Adam and Eve and the connection is love and that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice so he didn't need to deal with the man he was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall so he didn't have to waste his time there <laughs> are you getting the idea now that if I can get Eve you will be seeing it that when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it at that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. The Bible says Satan came and met the woman. <clears throat> now watch this. Notice the first thing, his conversation with the woman. Yea, had God said. Can you imagine? The beginning of his discussion mentioned God. Satan, look at the structure of his deception. Had God said. That means I told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known. Are you seeing the pattern here now? satan wanted all i need to know is what god told you that is the raw material for my fabricating my deception that means satan has no business coming to your life until god speaks the moment god speaks satan says now i have something to work with what did god tell you about your child 
what did God tell you about your destiny what did God tell you about your ministry deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth in this case what God said because everything God says is yea and amen let God be true and all men liars are we learning and he said unto the woman yea hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of Eden are you noticing that there's something with that statement he was doing something to the truth when I tell you truth can kill believe me it's not only a lie that kills he did something that forced her to defend what God said now the woman verse 2 the woman said Satan you didn't get that right let me correct you this is what he said we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden and he was listening but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God had said ye shall not eat it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die Satan said thank you now let me show you that I have an advantage of age over you verse 4 do not be ignorant of the devil's devices are we learning how Satan operates now when Satan comes to you the raw material for his attack is what God has said and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die are you seeing now verse do you know what he was doing to her here he was shaking the basis for her obedience that means now that I know what God has said I know that faith is obedience my next assignment is to do something to you for God don't know that in the day that ye eat thereof your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as the gods knowing good and evil satan was saying god is so insecure there is something he's hiding from you and that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule don't mind him trust me there is something i know when you eat this your eyes will be opened and you will be like him knowing good and evil verse 6 when the woman saw everybody say when the woman saw hmm. the discussion started by saying but by the time we get to this point she has perceived saw there does not just mean eyes she has conceived as a reality the woman did not fall by eating the fruit eating the fruit was proof she had fallen this was where the fall started perception don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her no that's why I told you the Bible is written in summary you you need to use you don't come like that in one day and convince someone go and read your Bible the Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife how many times did she come to him frequently Judas Iscariot it was not just once they met him and said deceive deceive Jesus it's within the character of Satan to be consistent the same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say marry me and then you have to come again. that structure Satan was patient and came and he said when the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the that's not normal seeing my brothers and sisters mm -mm. there is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit are we together the bible says the tree to be desired look at all this look at these emotional expressions it's more than just seeing a tree she was always looking at the tree what did she now see the Bible says she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Maybe in another time as God helps us, I will really explain to you what it really means, the concept of the tree and the fruit. 
but so that I don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing, we'll just accept it as eating. But you see, the concept of eating and the tree, these are, these are prophetic expressions. It may not necessarily mean tree and fruit, but it does not interrupt our understanding, even if we understand it that way. So we'll continue. The Bible says she did eat. Please, everybody, read the remaining part. And gave also unto her husband with her. Is it in your Bible? What did he do? Did he throw it? She ate. Now watch what happened. Do you know that when she ate, there was no effect. It was when he ate that something happened. Because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd. She ate and she gave him. Ate from deception, he ate from love. In any case, they ate. That's the bottom line. And then the Bible says the moment that happened, notice Satan stopped talking to them. It was over. You thought that after eating, you say, now, how do you feel? That is the structure of deception. Now that he had achieved his goal, he will now leave them with God. And he says, now off I go. The Bible says the eyes of them were open. Did he tell them something like that will happen? Absolutely. He said your eye will open. But they did not understand what he meant. The Bible says, and they knew. Now notice what happened here. There was already a disruption in the way God arranged the spirit of a man. Because the way God designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of God. The body would barely be an instrument of execution. Are we together? The mind that consists of the will, the emotion and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body. These are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body. And now we see that something is wrong. You can see that the soul came alive. The eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked. You see shame, attributes of emotions. They sowed fig leaves and made aprons. They ran away. God is about to speak. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Everybody say fear. fear. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Should you run away from the presence of the Lord? But now we see something happening to them. Are you seeing the way Satan works? He did not have to keep talking. The destruction can happen whether he's there or not. It's a programming. He has done something to them. The same way Satan can come and do something to a village. And after 30 years, it is still working. Whether he supervises or not. It's like a software. Now, he left these people. The next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question God asked him. Left the woman. Deception. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? When he came, he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman. When he came, he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion. Adam, you are the one I put alongside your wife. What has happened? I look spiritually and I don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again. When he said, Adam, where art thou? God, God speaks spiritually. There was a position that you could see you could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there. It is that same position that the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. When we look in the spirit, we all those who have dominion, we see that position. Where are you? Adam, where are you? You are lost. Adam. Who shifted you without pushing you? Who shifted you? Who, who gained mastery over you and made you to move, veer off 
you left the place of power and yet force was not used on you that is the power of deception I overcame Hallelujah He won the victory Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah Listen are you seeing what Satan did? They thought it was just a conversation. They did not understand the spiritual implication. Adam, I checked the place of authority and you are not there. Where are you? This is a tragedy that came upon men. You need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing. Remember the structure. What did God say? God did not mean what he will say and he will keep coming to you every day he knows that persistence is powerful Satan does not speak once let me tell you how he speaks he uses words he uses men he uses things he uses pain he's still the one speaking he will employ everything until he shifts you from that place there is a place where when you stand Adam now let me teach you something powerful for as long as man did not cooperate with satan satan looked powerless he was with them and could not touch them he was with them and could not touch them the power of satan is in your falling for his deception there was absolutely nothing he could do to adam and eve the best he could do was speak he had to depend on their seeing and their participating with his lies. And the Lord told him, where are you? Verse 10. Here's what Adam said. I heard your voice in the garden, but I was afraid. Something has happened to me. I heard your voice clearly. I've not lost my hearing, but I've lost my position. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you know what that means? The glory and the Shekinah that covers me has left. Something has happened to me. And I hid myself. Because I know what it means to not be covered by your glory. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Every time God comes to rescue you, the first question is who told you? You have opened up your ears to another influence. That means in any case, whether you are restored or you are deceived, it is based on what you were Told. now understand the power of words no Adam you have fallen who told you I'm tracing the root cause of your problem it came from information listen carefully dear father dear grandfather dear region where did this witchcraft come from it was not from the shrine it came from who told you you someone called you and said there is a way we make money in nigeria you cannot just make money like that let me tell you sincerely if it's money you want to make there is one man you say no 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 let me think about it what is what was happening to eve is happening to you when satan uses that man do you see that that was the same thing that happened with jesus satan came to jesus directly that was the last time he would come directly the next time he used the emotion of peter then he used judas in any case he felt he got him who told you that you were naked have you participated with what you heard 
did you do something about what you heard because every word we hear does not profit us if we don't mix it with faith no matter what it is that you hear if you have not mixed it with faith the bible says it will not profit those who hear it so if satan says kill yourself it remains as a thought for as long as you don't act on it wow if you wake up from a dream and in that dream you see an accident and all of a sudden you allow fear and you start thinking that is satan speaking so this is how i would die you are receiving it you may not know you don't receive by your hands alone the principal way of receiving is your mind you only have with your hand you receive with your spirit you receive with your mind Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? The first demonstration of irresponsibility as recorded in the Bible. Are you ready? And the man said, the woman, is that the answer? Adam, have you eaten of the tree? Yes or no? What was his answer? The woman. He's showing you, this is the first expression of the weakness that is in humans. That we are usually comfortable transferring blames. It is not natural for men to take responsibility. By men here is genderless, humans. Adam, have you eaten of this? The woman that you gave me to be with me. Look at this description. Not longer the woman I love. Not longer the one we strolled in the garden together with. The woman that you gave me to be with me in other words it's not my fault if i were alone no way satan will not get me i know you are laughing but you understand what god is teaching us here the family i came from is why things are happening like that that's the same answer you are giving why are you not rising because we come from a family of idol worship that's not the answer i know you can laugh at eve but we are learning now that many of us have been making the same thing and for as long as your answer seeks to transfer blame salvation will be far from you are, are we learning now this is a powerful spiritual concept two men were hanging on the cross with jesus christ one of them the bible called them thieves and one of them was quarreling Jesus, paraphrasing. Shame on you. We're on the cross. You're on the cross. You can't save us. The other one said, we are sinners. This man is righteous. Jesus looked at one and said, today, you will be with me in paradise. What happened to the other one? Now watch this. I'm showing you how Satan, how man transferred the dominion to Satan. Watch how it happened now. Every time you pass blame on anything you also give that thing authority over you it's a spiritual principle let me repeat myself again every time you pass blame on anyone or anything you give that thing authority over you blaming situations and circumstances for your life is giving them authority over you no matter how legitimate you think it is the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she did give me of the tree and i did eat he did not answer i did eat alone he had to tie someone else to cushion his guilt and he said yes i ate but hold on hold on the woman that you gave me is the cause for it now are you seeing that on legal basis god could now talk to the woman because satan has handed over responsibility to her and the lord said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done sadly she made the same mistake and the woman said satan the serpent beguiled me and i did it what is this that you have done the serpent beguiled me and i did it verse 14 he goes to satan and the lord god said to the serpent because thou hast done this 
thou art caused above all cattle and above all beasts of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life verse 15 i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel there's no time to now begin to teach you all these things he says to the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow shall thou bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee 17 and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife you see now you heard the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree which i commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat cost is the ground the ground is anywhere you sow cost is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life 18 thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto you and thou shalt eat of the herb in the field 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground for out of it was thou taken and dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return let's stop there what do we have to learn from this number one lesson number one understanding the operation of satan especially his deceptive nature which is his strongest point over the saints number one i told you that deception cannot happen until there is the awareness of the truth do you know what that means everything god tells you by speaking to you or by his word guard it carefully because somebody is coming there that adversary is coming to vet what god has told you when satan comes to you his primary assignment is to find out what god said because everything god said represents where he's taking you to lesson number two are you ready now guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life guard your ear gate guard your eye gate because these are the principal channels through which satan speaks can i tell you this if you think satan will always appear to you and talk to you it may not always happen like that but he will use your ear gate he will use your eye gate because these are the principal gates to your mind very soon you understand what paul was teaching in his pauline epistle is god helping us tonight number three faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and understanding it is not just faith towards god comes by hearing the word of god but faith towards anything comes by hearing the word of that thing faith towards destruction comes by hearing the word that makes for destruction faith towards failure comes by hearing the word that leads to failure and hearing again until it crystallizes in your heart 